remember, I remember I was working out of my mom's garage. I had just come home in 2005. Okay. And I'm on AR-15 like insane, right? Yeah. And I see this dude talking about he's got a podcast. I'm reading all this fiction before it had ever published. I'm reading Lights Out page by page. I printed yeah. out like 1,200 pages or so of Lights Out. And I'm correcting it. I'm lining it out and fixing his typos and stuff, right? Later, I actually meet David Crawford and we yeah. become good friends. Yeah, he's a good dude. And I, I see you post that you've got this podcast. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck's a podcast, right? So I start listening to a podcast. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I was home in 2005. So it's somewhere close there. And I had it was three, probably 08 by the time you listened to me. So I have, I have three years of probation to do. And we, we bail California like the day I'm off probation, we fly out here. So it's right, yeah, maybe 2008. Yeah. I'm home halfway through 2005, like June. And uh, I start listening to your stuff, and I'm like, man, I hope this guy keeps doing these podcasts. Yeah. And I feel like they were giving you shit over promoting your podcast on AR-15. A little bit. So. Not much. I, I kind of, like, stopped posting to the forums when I really, like, when it became a thing so that it wasn't perceived that way. But there were people that were, like, fucking dicks because, like, I had years of history posting there. So it's like, he's just promoting his podcast. Well, I didn't have a podcast in 2002, dick. Yeah. But whatever, you know, all right. Was it Modern Survival? Modern Survival, That's what yeah. You're po- yeah, yeah, Modern, Modern Survival. Modern Survival is my handle. Arfcom. And now, nowadays on Arfcom, like, I have a whole thread about how we hate John Willis. Like, it's pinned oh. to the top. So I've... I've You've ach- achieved success. I've achieved, right? <laughs> I had, like, 10,000 posts on there. And they're like... You can't post here anymore. I'm like, okay, I'll go do my own thing. So we get out here to Tennessee. Um, before we left, I'm like, I hope this guy continues to do these. Like, this is really awesome. And especially at the the speed you were putting them out, right? Yeah. So you didn't have to go and, like, wait two weeks to hear the next piece of the story. Yeah. So I remember I go, man, I want to send this guy something that he can give away and do like a listener appreciation or something. Mm-hmm. So I remember we sent you some slings a couple times. We sent some other stuff, and uh, you just kept going, man. And like after a year, I'm like, he's still doing it. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. And then after a year, I'm like, holy shit, he's still going. And then we move out here, and like I put speakers up, and if you worked for me, you were listening to. I remember Survival that. Podcast. I remember getting an email from you, and you were like, if you work for me, you fucking listen to Jack. But they liked it. Like <laughs> yeah. nobody bucked. Nobody's like, man, I hate listening to that motherfucker. Like they just they always were like, hey, is it time for Survival Podcast? Is it time yeah. to listen to the show? So that was super cool. And then I'm like. I want Jack Spearco to know who I am. And I don't know I don't know where that happened or how that happened at what point, but it was just super cool the first time I heard you say my name on the show. And nobody knew who I was and yeah. I didn't have anything to direct them to anyways. Yeah. But it and now I now I do a live feed once once a month with you guys and it's just it's awesome to be a part of that. Like yeah. so much of everything I do in my life every day, like I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't do any of that shit if it wasn't for the show and the people I've met because of the show. Like I feel like none of this industry would even be here. You know the the thing that I remember like the earliest thing, but we had been doing shit for a while before we did this was when we did the the year we did stockings for soldiers. Yeah. And you were doing the tattoo yeah. stockings and we were stuffing them like full of beef jerky and shit yep, yep. and sending them to like an, an FO, FOB yeah. over in freaking Afghanistan and stuff for Christmas. That had to be like. That had to be early as shit. That had to be like 09 or 10. Yeah. Like, it had to be back, all the way back in those days. Like, because, I'm just thinking, I know that we moved to Arkansas in 2011, and I remember packing all that shit up and doing videos on the floor of my house in Arlington. So it had to be pre-2011 that we did that. Yeah. So that goes way back. And, like, you've been really good to us. You've shared us with so many freaking people. And, like, every once in a while, like, you come out with some new shit, and I'll be like, I'm going to order that shit. So I'll order it. And like a fucking day later, I get my money back. You fucking cancel my order, and my friggin' shit comes back. My money comes back to me, and then a box comes. And there's like ten times more shit than I ordered in it. And you've always been good like that. And like anything we don't personally use, we either barter it or we give it away at the workshops and shit, and try to spread the message of what you guys are doing. Because I mean, check this shit out. This is awesome, right? I mean, it's but but I want to give my friends things. Right? I understand People that right? I care about. I want them to have my stuff. Yeah, and I'm like. Like, I don't, I, I know you know, but I don't think you realize the course that people's lives have taken because of you and the show. Like, 
And a lot of it's just, it was tough love, right? You're like, yeah. You're like, no, that's bullshit excuse. Like, <laughs> we were just out, we were just out back filming a piece of panic prepper, and, I'm, and I and I told Tad, I go, man, I cannot do these lines in front of all these people. And yeah. Bob, his dad back there, Bob said, that's bullshit, John. You fucking know you can. You need to fucking do these lines. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Somebody needs cool. to talk to me like that. And then you did, whether whether it was directly or not. Yeah. You, it was kind of like a, a father when a kid's doing something stupid and dangerous. Yeah. And you just grab him and shake the shit out of him for a second. <laughs> it's like a course correction. Yeah. And there's a lot of that, man. There's a lot of that. Like us moving, like we need to get out of California. I need to get out. You, people say it all the time, but I said it. And then you said something on the show literally as though you were like, I'm like, holy shit, it's meant to be, right? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not putting that as like a, a, re, you know, a, a religious thing. It's just you said the things I needed to hear yeah. when I needed to hear them. And that, that got us here. And that different steps in business. And, you know, I was, I was hoarding stuff up. And I was the dude living in a cave waiting for society to collapse. We moved here. And for about 10 years... We just kind of stayed to ourselves and didn't do anything. Yeah. And and from thirty to forty, Amanda and I spent our lives not traveling or doing anything, right? Yeah. And you you said something. I go, holy shit, that's me. I I need to get out of the cave. You know, I think it's like people don't realize like society has collapsed. This is what societal collapse looks like. For real? Stop waiting yeah. for it. I'm not saying it can't get worse, but like you might as well live your life while you have it, man, and, and enjoy it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People, yeah. Be be ready. We're ready. We got fucking suits of armor here and shit. Like, we're ready, but... People have a sense of... People have a perception that society is how they want to believe it is. And I'm like, you are among 20, 30 people every day, right? You see those same 20, 30 people. So you believe that's how society is. Yeah. Just because nothing has pounced on you when you come out of the door, and just because you've lived a life lucky enough that when you turn the faucet on, water always comes out, Yeah. you have a false sense of how the world is. If you really want to see how the world is, go to Walmart... On a on a welfare weekend, yeah, and during business hours, and yeah, you, and everybody you're going to see people there that you do not see in humanity. Like no, you don't see yeah. them out on the streets. Yeah, you don't. They, they're walking amongst us. We're just not there when they're <laughs> there, right? We used to lock people in asylums, and 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 now, man, it's it's just meds, meds, meds. Wait till those meds run out. Like society, there are people that will harm you everywhere you go and people just don't have a the reality of that they don't yeah. understand it i think the other thing that people could really do to understand reality is travel outside of this country but not to like the tourist meccas and shit like i spent six months in honduras in rural honduras and this was yeah. back in the early 90s or i spent two years in panama like and when, so when people tell me here like you know what if everything just goes to shit if i have to i'll eat garbage and i'm like there's no food in the fucking garbage yeah. in third world countries. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing. That's, that, no. Yeah. Nobody throws away anything edible. You know what I mean? Like, if, if it's so bad that people won't eat it, that's what the dogs get. Yeah. It's literally what the dogs get. So the dogs there to eat the dog if you need to eat the dog. Like, if people cringe at that, I, I love dogs, but it's, it's fucking reality, yeah. right? You know? Yeah, man. Well, that's awesome, dude. I'm super stoked that you're here. Yeah, man. I, Nicole said, I said, can we get Jack to come down? And she's like, I don't think we can get Jack. I go, look, <laughs> just ask Jack what the bribery cost is. Like, whatever yeah. that number is, I will make that happen. Yeah. And she's like, okay, Jack said he's on board. I'm like, well, what's the bribery cost? <laughs> so here you are. It's awesome. I'm. It's awesome that you're here, man. I, I just, it's so cool. That you, know, you know who you can thank for this? This is Dorothy. Awesome. Dorothy's like, I can go to, I can go to Tennessee this year. I'm like, but half of it's gonna be worse. She's like, okay. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Because I've been I've been trying to get up here forever. So you said half of it's gonna be worse. That's I think that's another important thing is to build our lives, right? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait a second. For my IRS agent, all of it is work. It's all work. Eddie, go, go ahead. Just to, to <laughs> like it like half of it's gonna be work, but yeah. like everything we've done today and tomorrow and the next day. I don't see it as work. No, it's not it's, work. Like, it's not. Everything I think mean, it's I work do, for her. Right, right. right like, right. I'm occupied, right? Right. Like, Everything yeah. we do and the, the way we're able to live and just, w and go, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. No, we're not doing that. What are you doing this weekend? I don't know, but not what you're about to ask. Not what you're doing. And not what you're doing. We just, we do what we want and we're lucky enough that I, if you do enough good and you build enough value, people want to be a part of it, right? So it's yeah. a huge, it's a huge community and we bring more communities. Our first self-reliance festival people like a, a man and a woman met who are now married yes. from different cool. states. We have people that come here from California, New York, Canada, other other countries, 
and literally meet people that live 15 minutes away from them. And they never know them. Never would have known. Have you noticed, like, when you do these, when it's, like, the last day and you have to leave, like, fuckers are, like, hanging out at the gate. Yeah. Not quite leaving. And that's because they don't want it to go away. They don't want it we to have end. Found, we have found that I will go out Monday morning yeah. and there's still people here camping. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, just, we yeah. have an ejection mode. We just we just let it, we just let it happen, Sunday morning. Man. You gotta go home. You don't have to go home. Yeah, you just but you to gotta leave. leave. Right? You know? we, just, we lock the doors. Lock but the but doors. I mean that's what it is. Like I I don't I'm not real rough about enforcing it because like I understand what's going on. Like because you get people like we have a lot of repeat. I'm sure you do too. But then you get the people that are new. And they're like, holy fuck, I found my brothers and sisters. Like, they, they, they realize, like, I'm not weird. Yeah. And like you said, sometimes people meet, and it's like, we actually had a couple people meet, and they, like, they realized they knew each other, but they didn't know yeah. that they were, like, into all this stuff or whatever because nobody wants to talk about it because everybody thinks you're a fucking weirdo or whatever. You need, like, a secret handshake or yeah. something, a sign. Yeah, man. I mean, if you know the tagline, or you know Talk to the Squirrel, we can't tell you guys. Talk that to the here. Squirrel, Talk to yeah. the Squirrel, right? Yeah. Or even you, I might make you the only person that knows what Talk to the Squirrel is, that's not been to my place. Or or even... You're an honorary squirrel. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> or, or even the Ant and the Grasshopper. I mean, people yeah. don't have... They don't know. Yeah. They just don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, thanks for having me up here. Dude, thank you for coming. Yeah, man. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, man, I'm talking about realists. One of the realists to try. My family, SOE, got the tools to survive.